man, guys, maybe we should have titled this video Biggest Mistakes because Carl messed up big time with this lovely lady right here. I'll tell you all about it in just a little bit. What's going on, guys, and welcome on in. Let's go back to our roots and do a little bit of a beginner to mid-game daily routine plus priority list, tips and tricks, all-encompassing video for 2021. I'll go ahead and go through my top things I do in, on a daily basis to stay on top of my game, stay efficient. If y'all have any extra tips, any secret stuff, any other daily routine things that we can all incorporate and sort of min-max, be more efficient, leave them in the comments below. I love hearing from y'all. So this will be mostly for my mid-game, early game players, but I actually have a few things sprinkled in for my end-game players that I've already noticed I messed up on. So stay tuned. Hopefully everybody can learn a few uh, things here and there on this video, all right? So first up in our daily routine, guys, this isn't really part of the daily routine, but it needs to be talked about first is the adventurer path okay everybody's gonna know about it my early game players you'll be given a tutorial to, to keep an eye on it my end game players stay tuned i got something to tell y'all but just make sure no matter what you're doing you're always staying on top of this the rewards are too dang good to pass up make sure you don't miss it out on stuff because it's not all completely retroactive um especially my end game players and when we go to this part you're gonna have to redo a few things but my early game players just stay on top of things, whenever you're doing a, your daily tasks, whatever you have planned for the day, let's say, for example, later on in the um, in the list, look ahead. If you have things like enhanced equipment, maybe hold off on enhancing gear until you get to this stage. If you're on things like um, explore the labyrinth, make sure you have keys ready for that. You'll see in a second when I go to the, my next step that I'm actually out of keys, so I would have messed up on this, on this step. Just look ahead, plan accordingly, Take advantage of all this and get it done because let's get to the next part, guys. Once y'all reach endgame, my endgame players, the big tip I have for y'all, and I need to do this next hunt event or next AP event, I got to get this done. This is going to scale from 400 to 600 to 800. I didn't take advantage of it last event, and I'm kicking myself in the butt for it. I would have saved so much energy, so I'm probably going to put it off until unless I get to SE Doris. Who I got to build, which is going to be another one of my tips. But just make sure even my endgame players, you you're take a look at this. A lot of it you'll have done already. Some of it you'll have to go back and redo. And another tip for my endgame players, besides the golem thing. Hey, we all got to do golem. No one wants to do it, but you got to get it done. Spirit also stuff is easy. It's really the AP event that you're going to want to do on either the, the event or just, you know, start getting it done now. But this is a big one. Clear Nixing Sanctum. So my newer players. You may not be or you may not have Nixing Sanctum unlocked, but keep it in mind once you start getting later on in the adventure list. All right. Nixing Sanctum is one of the last labs introduced. It is very tricky. It is very, very mind numbingly boring. It's also super difficult to navigate. You'll have to pull up a guide. You'll have to have lots of keys set aside. You can't finish it in one day. It's going to take a lot of time. The higher morale teams you bring, the better. But my end game players get this done ASAP. Now, another tip, if you have this already done, all you got to do, because I already had this cleared, you, you can see here, I have Nixie 4 cleared and it's going to say it's checked off. See that? I can't, you know, I couldn't complete 4 without completing 3. All you got to do is go back in there if you've already completed it, go to a portal, and then make sure it eats up the key. Don't yield out, eat, eat up the key, and it'll count as your success. But anyone that hasn't done Nixie Sanctum, keep it in mind, it is something you need to keep track of ASAP, all right? Everybody, just keep, it, keep on top of the adventurer's path. Such good stuff. I can't wait to get all of it. All right, next up, guys, speaking of Labyrinth and Labyrinth Keys, let's go through our daily routine. So a lot of y'all have seen in my other tips and tricks video. I always check this every single day. Make it a habit. Do not miss out. I'll show you in a second, but this kind of ties back to our previous tip. In the Labyrinth, make sure you always have a key set aside because you're going to want to, on top of the normal routine, hey, early game players, you're going to want to do this ASAP, but everyone else, you're doing your normal labs, I hope, on a weekly basis or on a daily basis. Um, Make sure you have double, you're, it's going to take two keys to run the normal raid, right? Make sure you leave yourself one key so you can enter this castle daily. If you mess up, you have one backup option, which I'm going to show you right now. And oops, it's in the guild shop, I believe. Check your guild shop, you go to the member shop, and you can buy this once a week. If you mess up though, and you do your normal raid first, you don't get to check your daily lab. So that's your backup. Use that as a backup and just make sure before you do normal raid, check the daily lab. That's my tip. Early players, just check this period if you're not on normal raid yet. You go ahead and jump in here. I like to do um, the first stage. You can pick any stage you want, just you'll look up where Hoochie is. I go up here, teleport to the bottom. And uh, I have to do one fight, depending on your lab, if you haven't fully cleared it, whatever. You may skip the fight, it doesn't really matter too much. I think I commented before, there's a way to skip it fully, but um, it requires like, I don't know, resetting the lab and like not doing it. But anyways, the main thing is, 
to check your Vagrant Merchant, Hoochie Merchant, every single day. Let's see what we get today. Look at that, guys. We get some bookmarks. Not the best shop. If you ever get epic artifact charms or things like that, it is so huge for your progress. Hey, heads up, though. These charms are on a discounted rate compared to, like, the Goblin um, in Story Mode 3 or 2. Two or three. So you always want to pick up every single charm. Catalyst can be a maybe, uh, depending on how much gold you have. If you're low on gold, probably just pick up the charms first and first foremost, along with bookmarks, and then call it a day. But check that every single day, guys. Sometimes it's so stacked, you can't, you know, make sure you don't miss out on it. On top of that, guys, last thing on my daily routine, you know, make sure you just purify the lab every day. Most people know about this now, especially because it's in the Adventure Path stuff. But if you haven't been purifying this every single day, you're missing out on so much free gold and stigma. It's the part of the daily, so I think everybody does it nowadays. One thing to keep in mind, just like I said with the Adventure Path, if you haven't done your Adventure Path for the day yet, or the Abyss portion of it, don't purify this ASAP, or if you want to climb, right? I've got no habit of purifying it like instantly. Sometimes you mess up and you actually want to use those abyss keys for um, adventure path or for climbing. So just be aware. <laughs> Double check if you need to purify it or not. Okay. All right. Next up, we're going to encompass all of this stuff together real fast. And that is using up your daily energy, taking advantage of the web event, and then, you know, the free friendship. And then I'm going to tell you all a tip that I do with all that free stuff I get if I don't have any other tasks, any other projects planned for the day. Okay. So number one, guys. Y'all roasted me on my last tips and tricks video. I love those kind of comments if y'all put it in good fun. Well, Car, one of your biggest mistakes is overcap your energy. True. Guys, never let this overcap. I'm gonna give I'm gonna tell y'all what I've been doing to make sure I'm never overcapped right after I talk about it. But you know, just make sure you're making use of this. Don't let this go over 154. That way you're always regenerating energy as a free-to-play player, if that's what you are. It's even more so important, okay? But first, of course, guys, we all know this. Make sure you get your web event. One comment on the web event. So far, it seems like this is the gold standard. About 200 energy per day, which is very nice. Props to Smilegate. We didn't always get this, guys. And on top of that, we also get one free unequipped scroll. Um, the unequipped scroll, you can either leave it. I would leave it here until you're ready to use it. Just make sure you claim it before the web event ends. Otherwise, it disappears forever. So the reason I say save it is because if you claim it immediately, it has a timer. I think a seven-day timer in your mailbox. The longer you wait on it, the longer you have to uh, plan and use this for, hey, like my gear optimizer video. If you plan to use that, go ahead and save this for that. And you can set aside a day and plan and get yourself extra time. But regardless, of course, on a daily routine, get all your free energy. Get the free energy from your friendship, right? Let's see if I claimed mine yet today. I might have. No, I didn't. Get your free en uh, energy. We'll talk about the flags next step. But get all that, get your web event stuff. And here's what I've been doing, guys, to make sure I don't overcap is... Now, new players, you may not be able to do this just yet, but you can pick an easier content for you. I like to load up A13 overnight. I'll set an auto run, auto 20, make it you, that uses up about what? Let's say, um, I believe this costs 22 energy. So over 400, right? We just jump in and I'll set this overnight. And with the free energy plus the web event plus the 154, it almost pretty much just neatly ties into itself. And on top of that, my endgame players, here's a tip for you. A13, if you have Cham Z, if you have Iceria, Tama, you know, your safe auto comps that just 100% guarantee killing it. Um, you don't care, care about speed, you don't care about one-shotting. Load up. If you have haste, he actually can carry like the entire squad alone. I'm power I'm powering up Landy for friendship, guys. Here's a big tip. We get a lot of free friendship stuff from the new um, side story event. If your unit can be used in hunts, farming, adventure mode, don't be using the lanterns on those characters, all right? Use your friendship for characters that um, are very niche, like PvP only, because that's going to take much longer. You have to spend energy on like two energy refresh stages. If they can be used in hunts or farming, don't give them the free friendship stuff, like I'm using Landy here. I use this as a very good source of free friendship every night, so this is my energy dump. Let me know what your guys' is. Um, if you can't do A13 yet, do a uh, Wyvern overnight, whatever hunt you want. I just like A13 because it's it's slow, so I don't normally like doing it. You'll always need immunity. And um, like I said, there's units that can just make this 100% failsafe auto and have friendship units on top of it, all right? Well, that's it for those tips. Now, next up, guys, real fast, we got arenas. Y'all saw my last tips and tricks video. I talked about this, but let's cover it one more time because I got, you know... This is kind of a uh, don't make mistakes car made. Guys, I told y'all I sit in champ five and claim 800 free sky stones a week. So regardless of where you're at, right? 
You want to be maximizing your free weekly sky stones and always pick the sky stones over the mystics, no matter where you're at. Now, I fell out of champion because I got lazy. I got attacked a few too many times and I fell all the way to champ three. And then I got lazy again and fell to challenge and champ, excuse me, challenger five. So from champ five all the way down to challenge five. And I have to, I had to climb a thousand points. I'm still not there. Wish me luck. I'm going to try to get to 5,000 by tonight. I'll let you know in the next video if I made it, but it's just a pain in the butt to grind all the way back up. Now, what I want to talk about to my new players, I'll hammer home again because this is super important. Just do your arenas. Let's start with the players that maybe don't like PvP car. I'm not a big fan of PvP. Well, check out my last tips and tricks video. I gave you all a guide on how to just yield out. So do your NPC challenges. After that, pick an opponent and just yield to them. You always be using your free flags. If you're staying on top of making sure your energy is uncapped, you should always be making sure your conquest or your um, arena flags aren't capped either. They refresh, um, you know, every so often. And the biggest thing, guys, conquest points are so dang important. I see a lot of players sitting on 900 flags. They might be endgame players. They don't care. I think they're making a mistake, too. They could just be yielding out immediately. Don't stack up all the flags. Make sure you're capitalizing on them, too. It's a mistake I make all the time, but the conquest points can now be used for charms. Or they've always been able to use for charms on top of slates, on top of gear. You got to get it done. You got to make sure you do it. And if you hate PvP, I gave you all a good suggestion of doing the NPC challenges and then just picking an opponent and just continually yielding for them. You get rewarded for losing. So just use the flags. Use them. I just got another flag here as, as a recording. And um, make sure, guys, those of you that are, that are climbing, don't put off Arena. If you're super new, let's say you just, you're just you focusing on your Wyvern team first, use your Wyvern units. The worst that happens is you lose. But you'll be surprised at what you can beat. Even if they have MLs, if your units are geared uh, appropriately and you play smart, you can probably beat a lot of teams you didn't think you could with things like Lena, Free Spirit, Tiara. Your farmers could probably be cleaning up down in bronze, silver, and gold, all right? Just try it. The worst that can happen is your ego gets hurt a little bit. But like I said, you still get rewarded for losing. So it's a win-win. Use all your flags. It's the main source of slates and charms and then the free conquest gear, which every player needs. All right. Last tip, guys. Last bonus tip. Priority list. Check out this table I have. Four specialty change units. And guys, one of mine is level five. The reason I chose these four is because I think they're the most prominent at the moment. The most OP. And... In this meta, guys, I'm about to release a tier list for high up, high up tier um, RTA. So my new players, you don't really need to check that one out. But a lot of these units are on there. This is the best time for red, green, blue units, non-ML5s. This meta is the premier non-ML5 meta. Of course, ML5s are still very strong. But if you have like a starting roster of these, right? Plus like your Ravis, your Landys, what other red, green, blue units, you can be skyrocketing success in, uh, in PvP. So... Like I said, with you know, I missed out on the AP event. If you're doing your adventure path, make sure you're also farming for your Dorises, your Falconer Clarys, your Adventure Raws, both of their um, the SC initial part where you give them the test, and then the post grinding the runes for their um, their skill ups. All right, all of these are amazing. Every early game player needs Angelic Momo, right? She'll help you every single place, even PvP early. Later on, she's kind of falling off at the moment in endgame PvP, but these three shine in endgame PvP like no other. These two are actually like some of the most highly contested first picks, Roz and Flurry, and Doris is just better than ever in the current meta. One of the best Soul Weavers currently. So get them all done. Don't be like me. I gotta get Doris done. Don't put this off. Prioritize this over even like new fancy units like Sermia. Yeah, she's cool, but I bet you Roz, Flurry, and Doris, and Momo will get you better progress. I kid you not. So make sure you get those done. All right, that's my tip for incorporate these into your daily routine when you're farming, when you're AP farming, spirit runes, whatever. Get them done. All right. Anyways, guys, if you have any other suggestions on daily routine stuff, tips and tricks, leave them in the comments below. And um, yeah, I'll have some more beginner content coming out and end game content as well. All right. Thank you as always for watching. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace out, guys.